Welcome to the Caregiving Essentials webinar series. My name is Christine Kennedy, and on behalf of the Office of Alumni Engagement and McMaster University Continuing Education, I'd like to thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Caregiving Support in Canada. Change is coming. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge that the land on which we reside, McMaster University, recognizes and acknowledges that it is located on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations and within the lands protected by the Ditch with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Now, before we begin, uh, we always like to start the webinar with a few housekeeping items. Um, we will be taking questions as usual, and the chat is open for you. So if you'd like to um, post something for Donna and Krista, our speakers today, please put that in the chat. Also, uh, there's closed captioning, so if you would like to activate it, please click on uh, the bottom of the screen, and then you'll see something that says click live, and, that, and the transcript will come up. A reminder, today's webinar is being recorded, and you will receive an email later in the week, hopefully Thursday or Friday, with a link to the recording for the webinar, and also any resources that we post uh, in the chat. So uh, if you don't get any of those links, don't worry, they'll be forthcoming in that email. Uh, now we're trying something new after sort of the formal part of the webinar. We're gonna have an informal chat with Donna and Krista. So after this formal part, if you'd like to stay on, and ask Donna a question, ask Krista a question, uh, be a little more informal. We can, you know, allow people to, um, to instead of chatting, if you want to, um, you know, talk to us, we're going to try that out. We're, we're calling, kind of calling a coffee with Donna. So we're going to play a little outro, but stay on if you want to, um, if they can ask some other questions, maybe some more uh, personal or intimate questions that you, you know, that you really would like Donna to answer, and we can do that sort of in a, in a smaller setting. Um, so having said that, something we did new this time is we asked you to pre-submit questions, and we were inundated with questions, and I, I gave those to Donna. So she is going to answer some of those questions during the formal part of the presentation, and then she's going to use sort of the informal part where um, we'll probably have less people to talk about more of those personal questions that people ask. So if you had a question and you're on, please stay on for the informal part after, you know, one o'clock, and you can participate in that. So after all of that, now it's my pleasure to introduce our two speakers today. Uh, Donna Thompson is the facilitator of the Caregiving Essentials webinar series and is a caregiver, educator, and author herself. She has written two best-selling books on caregiving, including The Unexpected Journey of Caring, The Transformation of Loved Ones, of Loved One to Caregiver. Uh, Donna also facilitates the free online course for caregivers, Caregiving Essentials, and she is a co-designer and co-instructor of the Family Engagement and Research course, both here at McMaster. And if you're interested in the free um, Caregiving Essentials course, that information will uh, follow in, in the links. I'm joining Donna today is Krista Hanstra. Krista is a trailblazer in family caregiving, patient and resident engagement, and she thrives when bringing together groups of people for a common purpose to achieve a common goal. As a senior leader and strategic advisor for the Canadian Centre for Caregiving Excellence, Krista works with a variety of clients in the healthcare, academic, consumer, and community sectors. Krista holds a Bachelor of Social Science from the University of Ottawa, a postgraduate diploma in corporate communications from Seneca College, and recently received her designation as an executive scholar in nonprofit marketing at the Kellogg School of Business at Northwestern University in Chicago, Illinois. Krista has won numerous awards and recognition for her strategic communication, branding, social media, and patient and caregiving engagement work. So today, it's going to be a great talk. Thanks to you both, Krista and Donna, for joining us. And Donna, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Christine, and welcome, Krista. I am really delighted to be here with, with you today, Krista, because we're going to have I think a really great chat. And I think our chat is going to feel optimistic about the future of caregiving in Canada. I feel optimistic, I think for the first time in my adult life of caregiving, that the future of caregiving is a lot brighter than um, it was even two years ago. Krista, can you share with us um, how you came to this work and 
Uh, tell us about your role at the Canadian Center for Caregiving Excellence, too. Sure. Thanks for having me, Donna, and thanks for inviting me. I'm really happy to be here. So first and foremost, um, like everyone here, I am a family caregiver and have been for many, many years. Um, so I have a brother who has a serious mental illness and has been living with that for 25 years. So I've been doing it for most of my life. And then I, my dad was diagnosed about 10 years ago with frontal temporal lobe dementia, which I now call the Bruce Willis type of dementia. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we are all working together to care for him. So I, I come to my role, which is uh, a strategic advisor to the Canadian Centre for Caregiving Excellence with some personal experience. Uh, but I also uh, have a background in strategic communications and then more recently um, really doubling those um, skills and resources to do a lot of co-design and engagement with patients and caregivers and residents and clients across many different parts of the healthcare system. Um, and so the, that's my background, what I come, what I bring to the table. And I often talk about like taking my caregiver hat off and being in my professional role but also recognizing that no matter what I'm doing, I have that very real um, caregiving experience that I bring to every discussion. Mm -hmm. So I can talk about the caregivers can piece and what I'm doing specifically there. Yes. All right. So um, I am an independent uh, consultant, so I work for myself and I'm working with the Canadian Centre for Caregiving Excellence facilitating two things, one of which we're going to spend a lot of time talking about today. One is the Caregivers Can group, which is a network of caregivers who um, want to make change. And I can talk about the history of that group in a second. Um, but the CCCE is very committed to doing everything that they are doing with input and uh, with partnership from caregivers and people with lived experience. And so Caregivers Can is that group of people, although they do reach out to many other caregivers as well, but there's kind of a formal structure we have with that group. And secondly is... Uh, I'm also helping them work on a specific project related to working caregivers. So employed people who are caregiving while they're employed. Again, I can put my hand up for that one. And um, so we're looking at how do we um, bring the voice of caregivers and real experiences and the nuances of that to the policy discussion. And I, like you, Donna, feel very positive about where we're going with the leadership of CCCE because they really do understand it uh, and they have the ear of the right people, I think, to make change. And I think that change needs to happen from the top down and the bottom up and, and they're facil facilitating both of those. Yeah. And just to remind everyone, the CCCE is the Canadian Centre for Caregiving Excellence and um, the website for the organization um, is in the chat. So uh, you're very welcome to. And again, you'll be getting uh, the, these links in an email after, after the webinar in about a week or so, usually that happens. So um, the, this, I, have, I guess I should say um, to everyone that the Canadian Centre for Caregiving Excellence is um, not a government program. Maybe you can tell us why that's a good thing, Krista, and why we we come to this organization. And I'm personally an advisor and very passionate supporter um, for the 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 center. Um, and I know that it's going to be with us in the long term to make real change for Canadian caregivers. So. How did it all start? That's a great question. I, I, like you, Donna, have seen over the years of working in healthcare, many caregiver organizations or um, entities or groups that are doing excellent work. Um, and many do it with that commitment to doing it in collaboration and in partnership with caregivers. What makes the CCCE unique is that they are a um, philanthropically funded organization through the Israeli Foundation. So that means they have um, sustainable funding, which is different than we know from many other organizations. Uh, and they have a very passionate role of making driving positive change. And they can be very... Um, 
they, they don't have, sometimes when you work, uh, even if you are, have a little bit of government funding, you have to be a bit cautious about how you approach different government agencies. And because they are not dependent on government funding at all, it gives them that freedom to really bring the voice of caregivers and the needs of caregivers in an unfiltered way to those who can make change. And as I said, I really feel like they're going to do that in multiple ways. It's not just a policy think tank. It is really an organization that rolls up its sleeves and does things on its own as well in uh, partnership with caregivers but also um, has the ear of all the political parties. Um, that's the other big piece is we sometimes know that things are funded based on one political party and then they're not in power anymore and funding can change. And so with this particular organization, they've, they've officially been around for one year. Donna, you and I know because you introduced us to them about a, a year before they went public. Um, that they've been around for a little bit longer than that, but they're very new um, and they have a really um, clear mandate to uh, drive change for caregivers. And I think in the, as you said, in the last two years, we've learned that, well, we've, we've all known that caregivers need different kinds of support, but we, I think there are people paying attention in new ways in, in light of the pandemic and um, the role that caregivers played during the pandemic. Um, and I do think that there, there's finally some movement around um, change and positive change uh, for caregivers. Yeah, I, I feel that too. I feel this strongly. In, in the very short time this organization has um, been in existence, so much work has already been done to yeah. advocate um, and build the case for a national caregiver strategy in Canada. Yeah. You know, a lot of the questions that we received um, from today's participants uh, had to do with questions um, to do with financial assistance. How can caregivers manage financially? How can caregivers even be paid to do family caregiving, especially in the context of when it comes to that tipping point and you have to quit your job? Um, Maybe that's a job that the family is depending on for an income. How can people, you know, take a leave? Um, and a lot of these questions are being uh, there. The, the white paper has these mm -hmm. critical questions in um, its crosshairs. So uh, I'm just looking at the, the chat box and um, I'm going to ask Jennifer, who's our helper on the, the call today, to answer a question about copying and pasting into Word. Um, so we, we, we came together in, and we had a very determined um, objective at the Canadian Centre for Caregiving Excellence to include caregivers and to, this is a this, we own this organization. Um, it's funded by the Azriali Foundation, but it's all caregiver driven. Every single person is a caregiver there. And can you tell us, Krista, about Caregivers Can? Where did that part of the organization come from? How can people get involved? And what difference is it going to make to our lives? Okay, I'm more than happy to. So let me just take one step back around um, the panel. So the the we, I call it a panel. It's a group of caregivers, um, and because of pandemic, we haven't yet met in person. So it's all virtual at the moment. Um, I'm hoping that's going to change in the fall when the summit comes up, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, the when um, Donna, you brought CCCE when in its very early days before it was public to our attention. I was working with actually a professor at McMaster, Cien Ciao. Um, and so he had a group of caregivers. So, and, and I'm just going to take one further step back. Cien and I worked together um, in a different uh, way when I was at the Change Foundation. And the Change Foundation was an Ontario based organization that was working on how to better integrate, support, acknowledge, and recognize um, caregivers in the healthcare sector. And we had created um, a caregiver panel uh, because again, everything we did was to be um, co-designed by caregivers. 
So CN um, was looking for a massive uh, transformational grant. And in order to do so, he put together a panel called Caregivers for Change. And they it was a group of people, caregivers and people interested in caregiving. So there were some who were researchers or organizations, and let's face it, most of them were also caregivers, but you know, again, we wore they wore different hats. Um, and they really wanted to drive change and be part of this transformational grant, which unfortunately was not successful. But there was this very motivated group of people, and Donna was a part of that. And so when CCCE, when the center um, started to surface, Donna said, I feel we Sienna and I were thinking, okay, how do we give this group a purpose? that actually is going to lead to change because in the absence of the funding from the grant, there was no money. So um, that's when Donna suggested we meet with Liv at CCCE and we immediately could feel that this was the right home for it because although we hear a lot about engagement and co-design with patients, residents, caregivers, it's kind of become a catch-all term and is often not meaningful. Um, and as someone who, you, you know, you can kind of see through it if you're meeting with someone who's just using all the right words, but isn't actually embracing it. That we, we sensed immediately from Liv, the executive director, that she was going to take this on and was committed to this being a for caregiver by caregiver organization. And so we then transitioned that group and obviously those who wanted to come over to, um, to be caregivers can. So we rebranded it because we wanted to make sure that it was clear that it was a different group and it was living in a new home. Um, and we needed to put all those, um, you know, administrative um, pieces together, like in terms of reference and, and the chair role and the membership and all of that good stuff. Um, and so now that group sits in caregivers can uh, in the CCCE organization and has become kind of that integral group of caregivers who help are helping to plan the subit or helping with policy work or helping with communications work are bringing their challenges and issues to the table so that everything that CCC is doing has the voice of caregivers right in the middle as equal partners. And I see how they are moving towards um, or they're creating the summit in the fall, which we're also going to talk about which is bigger than Caregivers Can, but Caregivers Can is a, a major contributor to it, to create a national strategy. And it's not a national strategy written by the foundation, sitting in an office, not talking. It's This strategy is being built already as we speak through all of the conversations they're having on a regular basis. So this feels very different than what we might see as a white paper that comes out where they haven't talked to caregivers uh, or uh, or um, different papers where it's much more academically or stats based. This is it, this brings all of that together, including the nuance of truly the lived experience and what's going to make a bit a difference to caregivers. So that's where I see, as you said, that hopefulness around where actually caregivers are really coming to the table. They're they're everything they do is flexible enough to enable caregivers to bring their voice forward and for that to be what drives um, their policy agenda, their program agenda, their service agenda. Uh, it's very impressive. It, it truly is. And I'm, I, I guess I always think, you know, that at, and as a Canadian, um, we live in a developed country and caregiving should not be this hard for us. We, it shouldn't be that we are alone, um, only learning from our mistakes um, in, in, the, in the privacy of our own home. So this is about coming together and making a big noise, saying we are here um, there are many of us in Canada giving care to others, and we we want to have a voice in how to do this without losing our lives, our livelihoods, our mental health, um, and uh, you know the relationships that are most precious to us in our lives. These are all at risk. I think currently we know how hard caregiving is, so. Given that this is a, a real beacon of hope, Caregivers Can is part of CCCE. 
how can caregivers, can you tell us the range of ways that caregivers can get involved, keep up to date, um, be heard, be able to influence um, policy, be able to uh, meet other caregivers who are as passionate about these issues as we are? What are the range of opportunities for getting involved in caregivers can, Krista? Sure. So uh, maybe we should just, shall I put the slides up and we can just show people because there's yes, also people. That would to... be great. Okay, great. Um, thank you. All right. So um, I've already mentioned this, but just formally, sorry, I'm just trying to change my screen view here. There we go. Um, so it is the not the only, but it is a primary mechanism for caregivers real experience to inform all of the work of CCCE. And we work as champions and ambassadors across a lot of their work. So we have um, on in our group people who are getting involved in the summit planning. Um, we've talked a bit about the summit and we're going to talk about it more in a second, but helping to identify the speakers, the topics, who's going to be there, how do we actually facilitate uh, important conversations between people who may not speak together regularly. So really being able to um, create a for caregivers by caregivers um, gathering in the fall that will inform that national strategy. Uh, there's people getting involved in communications uh, topics. We are uh, looking at policy, ways that we can influence policy. So um, for, when we talk about the white paper that they put out uh, very early on in their uh, tenure, they that white paper was informed by caregivers as well. Uh, now there's a private members bill that's sort of surfacing, and we're going to bring a group of caregivers together to have a conversation about, again, what do caregivers want to see in that kind of work? Um, at the summit, there's a parliamentary reception where caregivers will be present. Um, the working caregivers group that I talked about earlier, which is really looking at we know that employed caregivers have unique needs. We also know that they're not a homogeneous group. So what's the role that um, the center can play in driving change and meaningful change for working caregivers? So we have a group of working caregivers uh, who we are working alongside to um, identify what's already happening, looking at other jurisdictions, and then what is it helping to advise CCCE on where they could put their efforts uh, in that space that will complement what's already happening and help um, fill any gaps that exist, which of which there are many. So there's many different ways. Um, some people just join. Um, if you want to just flip to the next slide, um, some people just join Caregivers Can and we meet four times a year and that gives you at that meeting, you get lots of different updates. We do kind of, we're starting this month um, on an educational session. So there's a short advocacy 101 um, piece that's going to be a component of the meeting. Um, CCCE gives an update on pretty much all of their work so that there's um, everyone on the group knows what's happening. And then there's always opportunities to get involved in all of those different activities. Um, and so I know there was a question that it was a bit hard to find how to join. So you can join by going to the CanadianCaregiving.org website. And then under the four, under the caregivers tab, um, the third one down is the Canadian Caregivers Ad Ad Advisory Network. Sorry. Um, I just call it Caregivers Can. So that doesn't roll off my tongue easily. <laughs> if you click on that, you are essentially... Um, there's an opportunity to join their newsletter, but in that list, it also says, I'd like to be a member of Caregivers Can, and that's how you join. So feel free to register in that way. Uh, and we, we've we also, um, we're really committed to making sure that we have broad representation of caregivers, not that we have uh, caregivers who all have the same experience. And so we are looking to expand that group to have broader representation. And we've actually done a survey of those who are there so we know where our gaps are. Um, so we're open to having many different people. Again, we're we're about a year in the making, um, but um, I'm happy to have lots of new people join us. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different ways that you can get involved in that particular group. Um, and if you just wanted to understand what they're doing, the newsletter is a great way um, to under to just be on top of what uh, the center is working on. Should we go to the summit, Donna? Or do you want to? Talk a little bit more about this first. 
I just want to, before we go to the summit, I just want to touch on um, some questions that are coming up in the chat and in the Q&A sure. about the organizational structure of CCCE, which I think also reflects the big issues facing caregivers today. So caregivers can, um, I think is a way that we can, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of caregivers can is that caregivers can come together and say, what, what are our huge struggles? Yeah. Tell the leaders of CCCE, we think that um, accessing paid home care in the midst of a home, in, in the midst of a staffing crisis, we need to do something about this because yeah. we need help and there is no help. Yeah. So things like that. So yeah. caregivers can has that role of hearing the real issues of caregivers who are in the trenches right now. And yeah. then can you tell us like, what are the other um, aspects or the organizational structure of CCCE that also reflects on some of those big struggles? Yeah, so just to confirm what you're saying, um, absolutely, Caregivers Can is that place where people can bring those issues forward, and it, and they typically happen in different um, forums as well. Like I said, the the prime the private members bill is coming up, and that's an opportunity to speak to the person who's actually advocating and working with the members of Parliament who are working on that. And that's where we want to talk about those issues. The working caregivers work that I'm doing, or those who are employed and and caregiving at the same time. We are looking at all the stats and the data, but we're also meeting with caregivers of a whole different variety to understand those nuanced issues. And so we hear things like for people who have been um, unemployed for a long time at home caregiving for a long time, and that caregiving responsibility comes to an end in whichever way that happens, how do I get back into the workforce? Like that's sort of a, a whole new group of people. How do we um, how do we um, itemize or highlight the skills that we're building as caregivers um, so that that can support my reemployment or my employment in the future? So there's lots of different kind of nuanced pieces of that. Um, so uh, sorry, the second part of your question, Donna, has uh, escaped me. So just remind me. So the other um, the other uh, thematic uh, groups that are part of CCCE, so the sibling network, for right. example. Right. So um, that's right. CCCE has a number of priority areas, one of which is siblings. They have a um, so siblings is, again, a growing issue, um, something that hasn't really had a lot of attention where. Um, you would be a sibling caregiver, and obviously as parents get older and can't care anymore, that responsibility can fall to the sibling as an adult, and we've heard lots of stories about that. It also, you know, when you're younger, sometimes um, needing to support people in the home. So Siblings Canada is a group that's come together uh, under the centre. Again, it existed uh, in some way before, but they've been able to give it that um, solid, sustainable home, which is, again, the big piece that um, CCCE does that, um, that is where I'm very hopeful about because it actually has sustained funding. Uh, they have a big focus on disability. So I think that's another big piece that they um, are focused on uh, caregiving for disability, but also making sure that everything that they do is accessible. Um, they have uh, the they have a big focus on equity and underserved communities. I know they have a um, a project in the Yukon at the moment. Um, I think uh, they they're also working with francophone communities as a group that doesn't always get the attention it needs. And what they're trying to do is not, which I, again I feel is very important because this doesn't always happen. They're not trying to take over or uh, do something that someone else is doing. They're really trying to identify no. those gap areas. And so for me, siblings, a great example of that, the work they're doing on, in the Yukon, which is really incredible is another example of where there's just not been any focus on that in the Yukon and they're stepping in to do that. Um, and so they have uh, wellness programs. Um, as I mentioned, the caregiver friendly workplaces, which is ultimately the working caregiver work that we're doing. They have a number of key areas that they're um, 
focused on. And I think they're doing a lot of development of leadership and also caregivers being involved in helping to train leaders for the future. Um, and so there's many different ways that CCCE is looking for caregiver input. Yeah. And this is an opportunity, especially for people who want to share their personal experience to influence um, just making the caregiving experience easier um, yeah. moving forward for themselves, but also for others. I think caregivers are naturally <clears throat> altruistic and generous hearted you know we we want i think many of us i know so many of my caregiving friends and colleagues everybody wants to help make it better um and we're we all sort of look at each other and say geez you know i hope nobody experiences the hardship that i did and um so let's talk about the summit because yes. the summit is a conference that everybody's invited to. Um, it's going to be hybrid. So it's going to, you know, you don't need to spend a lot of money to attend um, virtually. It's highly subsidized um, by the Azraeli Foundation, uh, including for those people who would like to attend in person. But Krista, yeah. tell us about the summit, and then we can dig into what are we going to talk about at the summit? Yeah, no problem. So one of the things I'd like to say about the summit is it's, it is it um, is a Canadian, Canada-wide uh, gathering where, again, um, it will be bringing people who are interested in caregiving with caregivers together. I imagine it'll be a very equal split. Um, and it's not just um, a conference where you go to learn about the latest and the greatest. There will be some of that, but it's actually very much a working conversation on key areas. And so um, it's very much focused on, as I said, the one the one stream that I'm very involved in is work, education and care. And how do we um, look at it from many different angles so that on the final day we're having that we're kind of really wrestling with what is the what are the major issues um, in this particular area and where can CCC have the most impact? And so it will help both inform that um, national strategy I talked about and be very practical in terms of what are the next steps that CCCE can really help move forward. So it will not be just a come and learn and um. I often go to conferences, come and learn, and I'm inspired, and then I go back to the workplace the next day and everything feels the same, right? And so this is about how do we actually galvanize all of those things that we're hearing about at the summit and the lived experience and then actually making a plan to make it different. And that's what, to me, feels so very different. So it is... Um, it is a uh, hybrid, so you can attend virtually or you can attend in person. It is in Ottawa, and it's in Ottawa for strategic reasons. Obviously, that's where there are lots of government officials. Um, as you can see here, there's uh, the registration link can be found at the Canadian Caregiving Summit.ca, and you can follow all of the uh, happenings on social media. If you go to the next slide, I'll just give you a little bit more information about what's happening um, at the summit. Um, there is reduced pricing for caregivers, so please uh, be reminded of that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is really a caregivers included driven agenda. So this has been uh, informed by caregivers every step of the way. There are four um, major tracks, one of which I've already mentioned, work, education and care, um, social and community care. So it's kind of all the care that happens not necessarily in a hospital, uh, the care economy and then healthcare. Um, and there's lots of great speakers that are coming, um, Andre Picard, who people know, uh, representatives from the different uh, provincial organizations, um, Helen Reese, who runs Siblings Canada, is going to be there. Um, I know that there's a few other um, kind of big names that are maybe not quite confirmed, but that I'm very excited about. <laughs> I can't tell you who they are, um, but uh, people who are caregivers uh, who you would know from the public eye. Um, and, and we're trying to bring together um, all sorts of people um, who want to hear from caregivers. So um, policy people, thought leaders, people who are making in, in positions to make decisions and really to 
create that opportunity to have those one-on-one -on -one discussions with caregivers and understand um, the caregiving experience. I, I often talk about, um, you know, when we're looking at driving change, it's very, e not easy, but we always typically go to the data. We look at the numbers. We look at the kind of mechanics or the processes or the structures and we're always missing that nuanced component of the experience. That's where I get so passionate about the co-design and engagement is you can understand a lot from the data and the stats and the process. And But often when you layer that experience piece on top of it, it just helps identify where we want to prioritize change in, in the data and in, in the understanding, because that's the real piece, what, what people actually experience in their day to day. Um, and again, knowing that um, the center is so committed to that lived experience being a key driver for what they're focusing on makes me feel like we're actually going to see change. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Me too. And, you know, you mentioned Liv Mendelson, the executive director of the CCCE. She, she is a lifelong family caregiver. Um, she is a parent of a child who is neurodiverse. She cared um, with her family for her grandparents. Um, and I mean, everybody, and James Gennaro, who is head of the policy work at CCCE is also a caregiver. Um, everyone is. So, uh, you know, I love what you just said, Krista, which is that data and um, research and policy tells a story but we, we as caregivers can speak to these issues and say why it matters. Because last week, this happened in my home, in my family. And, yeah. and it speaks when you link lived experience to um, the research and the data and, and yeah. tell people, tell people a story about why this matters. Um, then, you know, the story can link back to health outcomes or um, economic policy around these issues or, or, or many of the, the issues that you've just described that are going to be pillars of discussion in the summit. So, yeah. you know, for example, um, in the uh, social and community pillar, I'm on that committee and I'm on the health one too. Um, but one aspect is respite that we will be talking about. I mean, respite is a huge issue for everybody mm -hmm. in caregiving. We need yeah. a break once in a while. So yeah. what are we going to do about this? But why is it important? And especially in all of these have taken on so much urgency since the pandemic, I think. Um, and Absolutely. people continue to be struggling without very much help um, at home. And I know, for example, um, where my son lives in a medical group home, um, it is meant to be a, re a respite home with a, a wing of residential. Um, he, our son has 24 hour one to one nursing care. He moved out of our home at age 23. Um, and he's 34 now, but um, the respite side of his home has not yet recovered from COVID. And all of those families of children and adults with disabilities, some of them very complex nursing, have not had a break since the beginning of the mm -hmm. pandemic, which is shocking when you think of it. Um, I. I, you know, some of the stories that we need to tell policymakers and decision makers around family caregiving experiences in Canada, these are urgent and they are appalling. Um, and I think, I think it's just fantastic that finally somebody seems to care. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and the Azrieli family does care. And um, I think we're doing all of this work collectively to help all Canadians care um, about this. So uh, 
Krista, <clears throat> you and I are going to be at the summit. Can you just share for a second, what are your personal hopes and dreams for the, the summit? What do you hope um, people will take away from the summit? Well, I, for me, hope is a very powerful thing. And, and for caregivers over the last couple of years, I don't know if hope would be the first word that would come out of their mouths. I, I mean, I'm hearing your story. I have similar stories about my dad and my mom, who's his 24 seven caregiver and, and not having any support for, for two full years. Um, and, yeah. and then when it was time to go back, um, they wouldn't let us go in with him to the day respite program. Um, and cause if we could just go with him for two or three times, then it would be a routine and he would get it, but they wouldn't let us because of COVID restrictions. And so as a result, he has no, there's no day programs left anyway, it's been, and you know, that's one of many stories. Um, but uh, my, for me, the idea of hope that actually people are paying attention to what family caregivers are doing and how they're contributing. Um, the, you know, when I did this work early on at the Change Foundation, sometimes just the recognition of mm -hmm. a caregiver's role went a long way. I, that is absolutely not enough. But to me, the fact that no one had ever even acknowledged them or recognized them was like a really big eye opener to, to say, we've got a long way to go. And I'm reading in this, uh, the chat, I'm trying to, it's hard to keep up with it all while, while we're chatting as well. But this idea of like paid people who are not PSWs who can support our family members at home so that they're at home and not um and in a more expensive place like a hospital or long-term care. And yet that to me, there's models like that around the world that we can adapt for here. And so the idea that we could actually explore those and commit to bringing them here, that is what excites me, knowing that there are um, smaller programs or you know grassroots initiatives that are making a big difference for caregivers. How do we bring that to the fore and, and really start to explore these more broadly. Um, we know that other jurisdictions, you know, they don't always do everything better, but there's things that we can learn. Um, and for, so for me, that kind of excitement and hope and commitment with actual resources and people and a commitment to, to make change happen um, as their primary focus, let's just be clear about that. This is their focus. It's not that they're, you know, doing this on top of 20 other things. Their focus is about making change for caregivers. It's not a program of a broader um, agenda. And so for me, that that that's what I'm hoping to leave with is having learned and heard about new things that I didn't know what, hap what was happening, uh, that were happening, um, having hope for change for the future, being inspired, and also just having that opportunity to connect with people who have the same commitment and passion for making change, um, because sometimes those unexpected um, connections can make such a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you've just you know, you've just uh, perfectly expressed my hopes for the summit too. I'm, I'm really hoping those are the same takeaways that I have. Um, and so I urge everyone to explore the, the summit. Um, can you just repeat the URL for the summit? It's um, Canadian caregiving summit dot CA dot ca i believe i'm going to just double check it's not right in front of me okay um, we just want to make sure we we share that there, there we it are. is yep Perfect. look at that dot ca <laughs> pretty good um so uh, can i, I just, donna yes. can i just jump in on one thing i just wanted to say i um, i mistook earlier talking about the yukon the program in the yukon it's actually in none of it so i just wanted to clarify that because that was my error and not to uh, double checking that before I stated it and just yeah. also wanted to flag that one of the other main programs that CCC is involved in is with young caregivers um, mm -hmm. and for anyone who knows me I know you know this Donna but I led the young caregivers work at the Change Foundation and so I'm very passionate about that as well it's connected to siblings and not and yet also not just about siblings so 
Yeah. 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 My daughter. Mm -hmm. That's the, yeah. she is a sibling and she was a young caregiver and she still will be. And she's a young person. And um, something happened to me and my husband, she would, um, she yeah. would be the power of attorney and decision maker for our son. And, and so yes, um, young caregivers have a very specific and particular set of uh, support needs. So no caregiver will be left behind in this initiative or at the summit. So, yeah, you know, I want to turn just for a minute, uh, because I see time marching, um, to just a couple of the questions, as I say, that people um, wrote in about, and some of them are specific. And as I, as uh, Christine mentioned at the very beginning of the webinar, we will be having an informal chat. So stay on if you don't have somewhere else you need to be at one o'clock today. But I did want to just um, highlight two um, resources. If you are in Ontario, the Ontario Caregiving Organization will be your go-to for um, one of the questions that came in, for example, is, is there a caregiver support group in my area where I live in Kitchener-Waterloo? That's the kind of question that you could ask the helpline at uh, the Canadian Caregiver Organization. Um, and the, uh, the helpline is this information you will find in the chat. Um, and uh, it's 416-1833-416-2273. And 2273 spells care. So um, uh, the caregiver, the caregiver, the, the Ontario Caregiver Organization is a fantastic resource. A lot of the other, uh, many of the other questions also had to do with financial concerns. Um, and I wanted to point out a really great tool that the Canadian government built that not that many people know about. It's called the Benefits Finder. And um, canadabenefits.gc.ca is the URL. Again, it's in the chat box. And if you click on that, you can fill in your information that is specific to you and your family and the benefits that you are eligible for, both provincial and federal, will show up and then guide you through how to apply for um, these benefits. So um, I hope that you'll take advantage of, um, of these. Um, and if you do want to read the white paper on the policy changes toward a national strategy for caregiving that um, has been written by uh, James Gennaro at the CCCE in collaboration with lots of family caregivers saying, that's not right. Yes, we need this. You forgot to add that. So it was a co-designed white paper with family caregivers. And if you'd like to read it, the link for that is uh, in, in the chat box as well. So um, I know that we have some, uh, some announcements from Christine. And the other thing is that if you are able to stay to have um, a more informal conversation and chat. Um, we can go through some more of your questions that you sent in and just um, respond to some of the questions in the chat as well. So that part won't be recorded. Um, it's just gonna be really informal chat, which we always love. So um, do stay on if you can. And Christine, over to you. Krista, thank you so much. My pleasure. Well, thank you to you both. Well, that was um, that was interesting in reading people's comments. You know, you can uh, tell that there's not the there's not the um, the political the political will to to have the changes because people are you know a lot of people are saying in the chat like you know I need this and I need that and I would like to do a little shout out. Um, so I graduated in the mid '90s from McMaster, and one of my friends from McMaster is on this webinar because he's a caregiver to his parents. So hello to Jerome. Thanks for putting the comments there, Jerome. Uh, so as Donna mentioned, this is sort of the 
conclusion to the formal part of our webinar. We're going to try this informal um, section afterwards. Uh, so for those of you who have attended our webinars in the past, um, you know that it it takes a it takes a village to put this together for you. So I do want to do a quick shout out um, to those who are behind the scenes. Uh, so we have Jennifer Rukowski, who organized the talk with Donna. They work on the Caregiving's Essential course, and we'll put that information up there for you. Uh, we also have Dave Dawson, uh, who works with me in the alumni office, and he is the our IT guru. He makes us sound good. He makes us look good. He makes sure that it's broadcast to everyone. We also have Liv Tassone, who is the marketing specialist with uh, McMaster Continuing Education. She's putting all the links there for you. And once again, if you weren't able to copy and paste the links, because sometimes it's a bit tricky, all of that will be sent to you in a couple of days in the follow-up uh, email. And also uh, the cute little animation that we have at the beginning and at the at the end, um, Shelly Zhu does that. Uh, she is another media specialist in the alumni office. So thanks to her for putting that together uh, for us. Uh, so we're seeing, um, we have another webinar coming up, and that's July 11th. Uh, Sarah Kaplan, who is a retired uh, social worker, is going to be joining Donna for that discussion. Um, also, we've made mention, you know, that we, there's this Caregiving Essentials course. It is free. It's offered um, through the McMaster Continuing Education. So we'll put links for that. Um, one of the actually a co-worker of mine who uh, took the course had said to me oh she took it too late she said the course was so good and she said, you know i wish i had taken it two or three years earlier um, in preparation instead of sort of being in the middle of the caregiving journey she went that she had taken it at the beginning of the caregiving journey so if you're thinking oh i don't know if i should take it you know um and maybe and maybe it's never too late to learn, right? So you might want to um, to think, oh, I should do that. It's free, and you can get a micro credential too if if you're looking for uh, for that. So I think that concludes the formal part. Please feel free to um, to stay on, and if you want to watch this again, um, you know there is a YouTube channel on the McMaster Continuing Education site. All of the webinar talks are on there, so perhaps you missed one, or maybe you just want to go and look at it and see what other top topics have been covered with Donna and her guest speaker. So we can go on to that. We'll put that uh, the YouTube link uh, in the chat there for you, and again, we'll include that on the uh, follow up email, so you can take a look at those other uh, topics. So we'll take a few minutes if you want to go grab some water or maybe have a little nibble since it is lunchtime. We're going to play a little concluding video, but we're going to stay on. And then in about a minute and 10 seconds, we'll be back and uh, we can answer some more of your questions. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Take care.